Hello YouTube, Andrew here. As part of this Learn to Fly playlist, today we're diving into the fantastically fun and challenging manoeuvre, the quick stop. What is it? Well, it's an advanced coordination technique that involves transitioning the helicopter from forward flight to the hover in as short a distance as possible. It's the helicopter equivalent of an emergency stop when driving. It's a controlled, rapid deceleration used in specific situations. In this video, we'll explore its purpose, safe ex execution and potential risks. Footage from on board an R-44 helicopter is mixed with simulator footage. The manoeuvre can be done into wind or using a slightly different method downwind with two different variations, depending if you have a nice wide area or a narrow area available. Here's a quick stop performed at Denham Airfield during tra training flight. And what's the purpose of the manoeuvre? Well, primarily pilots use it when transiting across an airfield, when it's safe to do so, um, uh, to save time from moving from the active runway back to parking or to a hangar, they can use the quick stop. Tactical situations for law enforcement, military search and rescue operations might use a quick stop for rapid directional changes. And finally, advanced training. Pilots practice quick stops to refine control skills, reaction time and spatial awareness under pressure. Plus, it's good fun. Now, safety first. Attempting a quick stop or indeed any helicopter flying without proper training and, uh, and licenses is incredibly dangerous. This video is for educational purposes only and always seek the guidance of a qualified instructor when practicing. So how do we fly a quick stop into wind? Well, first of all, it's important to maintain sufficient height above the ground throughout the maneuver, above a normal hover height whilst you start in forward flight. Next up, flare. So gently raise the nose with the cyclic to start the flare whilst simultaneously lowering the collective pitch to maintain altitude. Anti-torque pedal compensation. Apply opposite pedal to counteract the torque changes and maintain the directional control. And finally, transition back to the hover. As the SB blades off, smoothly transition back to a stable hover, raising the collective, applying the power pedal and lowering the nose back to a hover attitude. That's the overview. Let's go into a little bit more detail. So, from a stationary start in the hover, we first need to accelerate through transitional lift to forward flight. Let's choose 50 knots whilst keeping about 50 feet above the ground. When we want to stop, the instructor usually leads with the command, quick stop, quick stop, go. Then the nose is raised using the cyclic, the collective is lowered simultaneously to stop the helicopter from climbing. That's known as ballooning when you let the, the altitude increase unintentionally. And then as the speed reduces, you lower the nose with the cyclic. And due to the higher power requirement in the hover, the collective is raised to maintain the height above the ground. Once the helicopter has come to a stop, you allow the helicopter to slowly sink back to a normal hover height, around 6 to 10 feet off the ground. We will now have a look at a couple of common student pilot mistakes, starting with excessive aggressiveness. Starting too fast or flaring too abruptly can lead to a rotor overspeed and insufficient clearance between the tail rotor and the ground. Next up, inadequate pedal input. Improper anti-torque application can cause the helicopter to, in worst case, spin or lose directional control. In this example, uh, and the quick stop at Denham Airfield, Sufficient left pedal or power pedal hasn't been applied when re-leveling the helicopter, causing the yaw or the heading to vary. And then finally, we have altitude mismanagement. Descending unintentionally during the manoeuvre can be disastrous, especially in a nose-up altitude, where the clearance between the tail rotor and the ground is reduced, but also ballooning, as in this example on Flight Simulator, where as the nose is raised, the collective isn't lowered sufficiently and the altitude increases or the height above the ground increases, potentially putting you into the height velocity avoid curve. Before we move on to the downwind quick stop, let's just quickly recap the key points. Maintain the height with the collective, initially lowering it, then raising it as the airspeed bleeds off. Don't balloon on entry, don't sink once the speed reduces and keep the helicopter in balance using adjustments. If you were to use the same technique downwind as we did into wind, you run the risk of putting the helicopter into a vortex ring situation, a loss of tail rotor effectiveness situation, or where you run out of power. So instead, we use two different uh, methods, a turn and flare and the flare and turn method, depending on the size of the space and the width available. Here is a diagrammatic comparison of the two different techniques in action. As you can see, the turn and flare manoeuvre requires a shorter overall space but a wider turn radius. 
However, the flare and turn manoeuvre takes a longer length overall, but is more suitable for narrow, confined areas. Like the normal interwing quick stop, we start about 50 knots straight and level at about 50 feet height. However, on the command quick stop, quick stop go, we then start a turn, usually to the right, but can be to the left. We maintain the height in the turn while slowly applying half cyclic, but both manoeuvres require us to maintain 30 knots of airspeed until we're within about 30 degrees angle of the prevailing wind direction. Here's the manoeuvre in practice using three different flight simulators. As you enter the turn, the nose comes up, the collective is lowered to stop the helicopter from ballooning. However, as the airspeed bleeds off, just like the normal interwing quick stop, you raise collective and don't forget enough anti-torque pedal to straighten the helicopter out. As with the interwind quick stops, there are some risks and considerations to bear in mind. It is a high workload manoeuvre. It requires precise coordination of all the flight controls, increasing the pilot workload and the potential fare, and possible increase in stress on the airframe, greater strain on the engine due to the high to low power requirements, the rest system and the landing gear if you were to allow the helicopter to hit the ground. And then finally, obstacle avoidance. The manoeuvre is usually practised on an airfield initially, with other aircraft and helicopters operating. And as you fly around much faster than you would in a normal hover, you need to be aware of proximity to obstacles, ensuring that you have a good level of situational awareness at all times, especially when rolling into the bank turns where the rotor tips get a lot closer to the ground than in normal flight. Just like the interwing quick stop, once the helicopter has been brought to a stationary high hover, then you can allow it to descend forward and down very slowly in the hover. Remember, if you don't keep the helicopter in balance or in trim during the turn, then the airspeed indicator won't read correctly as it's not getting the necessary airflow into the pitot. We will now look at what is arguably the more challenging of all the manoeuvres discussed, the flare and turn, which is useful if you have a narrow but longer area available. Like a car, if the helicopter is going slower, then it has a much tighter turn radius. The key to this manoeuvre is to reduce some of the airspeed before you commence your turn, but ensure that you still have 30 knots of airspeed until you're within 30 degrees of the prevailing wind direction. The trick to this, from your starting speed, in this case 50 knots, flaring the aircraft and then re-leveling it to make sure you've got about 40 knots to start the turn. In the turn you lose another 10 knots or so until you're at the very end of the turn within that 30 degrees and you can bring the aircraft to a stationary hover. Here's the same manoeuvre, but viewed externally. With the downward quick stop, it's really important to ensure that you carry enough speed through the turn until you're within the last 30 degrees. This is to make sure that you don't inadvertently enter a vortex wing situation if you allow the aircraft to descend or slow down below 30 knots while still travelling downwind, uh, especially because you wouldn't have the height or indeed the space available to recover. This is an excerpt of a train flight at Denham Airfield in a quick stop from an R44 helicopter. Note I'm pointing out the airspeed indicator until we make it round the turn and now we're flaring the aircraft and bring it back into the, the hover before we can descend down. This simulator example showcases two common mistakes. Firstly, overly aggressively flaring the aircraft, allowing the airspeed to drop uh, too low before you start the turn, and then in the turn itself, not managing the collective so that the, the altitude or height above the ground decreases, putting the rotor tips far too close to the, uh, the surface of the ground. Additionally, if the helicopter isn't kept in trim, the airspeed indicator won't uh, function correctly and you may end up doing the turn far quicker than expected, allowing the SB to drop below 30 knots, as per this example. In conclusion, the Quick Stop is a great advanced coordination exercise to master, improving your overall general handling skills with real life uses and application. However, there are some potential threats to be aware of, and you need to control the helicopter accordingly. Thanks for joining us today. Hopefully you found this video informative and useful, and until next time, fly safe.